We were talking about Stravinsky and Balanchine last night about the that they had somewhat of a father-son relationship, actually, that uh, Stravinsky, Balanchine, I think, considered Stravinsky the master, and he was just the servant of the, of the music. Of course, the Russian heritage that kept the bond continually strong, but um, you know, out of that, the, the artistic relationship was, was really the key. And he would look to Stravinsky for ideas, and and he would be the first to say, as your question before, what is the point of it? Well, the point is the, the distribution of the music, really. So Stravinsky was the uh, teacher. Mr. Balanchine actually, I think, thought of himself as a musician even more than a choreographer wanted to be a musician and wished, therefore the mm, father element. Mm. He was a consummate musician, mm. but of course Stravinsky was the master. We all thought of Mr. Balanchine as being our father. father our master. Father God. <laughs> he thought of himself as being our czar. He came to America to create a czardom where he could be the king. And he actually did function that way very much. And you're either in favor or out of favor. It had to do with uh, availability to his idea, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as you were, had no personal agenda and you were totally available to him, he would use you. But what's so interesting, I think, too, we were also speaking of this, you know, in the beginning we were just learning everything from him. Then when he passed in 83, yeah. there was a crisis period of where, well, what do we do now and how do we integrate all this information and how do we carry it on? And now it seems like it's taking on a whole new life and uh, it's, it's all over the world. No one ever thought it would be as, as well-loved as it is now. And so we are trying to keep it new and alive now. And I think that's what's exciting about being a repetitor for the, for the George Balanchine Trust, is attempting to do that. And, and what we've found here is that, that they're so receptive to it. It's so lovely. You don't always, you don't always have that. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to put it across, but Mr. B would be proud, I think, of, of the work we're doing, that we're keeping it alive and fresh and vital. That's what's most important now. And very proud so. of the dancers that are achieving the, mm. the fruition of mm. the idea. I'm Maria Caligari, and I was a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet. I was in the company from 1974 to 1994, and I'm now a repetitor for uh, the George Balanchine Trust and the Jerome Robbins Rights Trust. Maria was uh, the best ballerina of her generation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you. I, I am Bart Cook, and I was also a principal dancer in the New York City Ballet mm -hmm. uh, from 1971. My career didn't really end. I became a ballet master there as I was dancing, and it's a, a great honor now to continue spreading the things that we learn and teaching the ballet companies around the world, the Balanchine works. Bart was also wonderful. <laughs>